All right. So, um, you guys ready? Yeah. Here, let me open this up. You guys can see this okay? Yeah, perfectly. Okay. Capacity and competence, uh, you guys know this already, but uh, capacity is a clinical term for an individual's ability to make an informed decision about a specific treatment. It must be a specific question that's being addressed. So oftentimes you'll get a call from the primary medical team. They'll say, hey, uh, I got a patient. Uh, can you assess for capacity? And it's like, okay, well, capacity for what? Um, well, can you just see if they can, make, if they have capacity? And, and the thing is, is that that's not what we do, right? We don't, we don't do general capacity um, assessments. Uh, competence is a legal term um, determined only by the court. It's defined as the ability to understand and rationally apply knowledge to a decision-making process. And everyone is assumed competent until proven otherwise. So uh, just because we say somebody doesn't have capacity doesn't automatically mean the medical team can do anything. It just means that uh, we're saying that he just can't make decisions for himself um, at this time or she. So the standard um, or threshold for capacity obviously will change depending on the situation. So it, it is a specific, a situation specific um, assessment. Um, and what I mean by that is um, there are two scenarios here that you can kind of understand why there would be two different thresholds. So you have a 29 year old male, he's admitted to the hospital for syncope, he's refusing a diagnostic EKG. Uh, the medical team is concerned about his ability to make this decision. And then the second uh, scenario, 29-year-old male admitted to the hospital for syncope is refusing potentially life-saving open-heart surgery. Uh, the medical team is concerned about his ability to make this decision. Now, you can understand in this really extreme example that the threshold for the EKG is not going to be, uh, it's, it's just not as um, pressing, right? So, you know, you, you may spend a little time assessing his first capacity and, and, and um, your threshold for capacity is going to be different than somebody who needs open-heart surgery if that makes sense. So in terms of how we assess capacity, um, there are four criteria. One is um, communicating a choice, communicating a choice. So the patient uh, should be able to indicate a preference that's consistent and free from coercion. There needs to be a, com you know, a choice that's consistent um, over time. Um, you wanna they wanna understand the, the relevant information. So you know they should be, paraphrasing whatever it is that's going on with them, be able to understand their medical condition, uh, why they're in the hospital, why um, this treatment is being offered. And, and, and then when they say appreciate the situation and its consequences, um, and then reason about the treatment options, I really look at these as really the kind of the same thing. They're kind of all overlapping. Um, the idea is basically what you want is you want the patient to be able to engage in a conversation with you about their treatment and be able to rationally manipulate that information in different ways. So you don't want to just go with a patient nods their head at every, everything you say, you want them to be talking and, and um, showing and demonstrating that they actually understand what's going on and why they're making the decision they're making, um, which may at times take sort of different approaches. You may have to go from different angles. And that's really what I, when I see the reasoning part in, in part four, it's really about um, does, do they understand this from different perspectives in terms of what their, what the consequences are, you know, I mean, they can regurgitate whatever the primary team said, but they, but if you ask in a different way, are they still, do they still understand the, the problem? Does that make sense? Okay. Any questions on that? These are different questions you can ask um, to, to assess each one of those uh, different criteria. Um, I'm not going like, to go through every single one just because that uh, you guys would fall asleep probably. So, uh, but you guys, I will send this to you uh, so you guys have this. No. So, so the, um, in terms of documenting, this is how we should be documenting capacity. Um, this is actually out of the Mass General Handbook. Um, so based upon my evaluation of this patient, he or she does or does not it's basically what you're saying is you're going through each of the criteria and explaining why that patient meets criteria for each one of those four points. Um, and using evidence from your interview to, um, to show why you're making that decision. Now, this is the standard. We, many times this is, doesn't happen, right? So you're in the hospital and you're doing a consult and you're doing capacity and your assessment is either one, one sentence, patient does or does not have capacity. Um, and from a legal standpoint, if something were to happen, 
it's really not enough. Um, you would be kind of torn apart if, uh, if, if something were to happen. So we really recommend using um, sort of this format. That way you're covering your bases. The other thing too I want to point out, this whole idea of two, physician, uh, two physicians can determine whether uh, somebody you know, can get life-saving treatment it's complete bogus. There's nothing in the law that states that two physicians need to approve. Law that's not a, a California state law. Only mm -hmm. one physician needs to determine whether somebody has capacity. Okay. Unless it's ECT. Sorry. Well, ECT is, is a different kind of a different story. Yeah. Um, so asking like, why is the consult being requested? Um, why do you think the patient may lack capacity if that's what, you know, they're obviously asking you for a capacity consult for a reason. Um, what is the patient's medical situation? Uh, what are the treatment choices that, that are being faced? Um, what has already been communicated to the patient? That's critical. I also usually recommend saying something like, asking something like, what specific behaviors are you noticing that, that are concerning to you about this lack of capacity. And what that does also, it, it helps you get a feel for what exactly is going on with the patient. Like, don't, don't do that whole, like, I'm going to tell you all the things medically that are going on with them. Just tell me physically, just describe the patient and what, how they're behaving in a way that made you feel like you needed to get a capacity consult. I think that helps um, in terms of, of focusing down the consult. Does that make sense? Is that helpful yeah. at all? No, it is. Okay. Um, so this you can read on your own. Uh, we don't need to go through this.